Hi, Ted Morrissey here, and I'm uh, doing a video for my advanced creative writing class, uh, which I teach at Southern New Hampshire University. And uh, this week we're talking about how we uh, sort of enrich and enhance our writing. Um, and there's all kinds of ways of doing that. But what I focus on in my announcement is reading, reading widely and voraciously. I talk about the fact that it certainly makes good sense that we read within the particular area that we're interested in writing in ourselves. So if we're a poet, it makes good sense that we would read collections of poetry by poets that we admire, kind of pick up on some of their techniques. If we are a fiction writer, it makes good sense that we would read novels and short story collections, etc., by writers that we admire who are producing work that we would like to produce uh, ourselves eventually. Uh, if we're a screenwriter, you know, looking at screenplays written by writers that we admire and all that kind of thing. Makes good sense, obviously. You can extract all kinds of techniques and, and see kind of how they did things, kind of lift up the hood, so to speak. But if we just limit ourselves to that, that very utilitarian kind of reading, I don't think our work will be as um, enriched it won't be, have as much depth, it won't be as engaging as it could be. I think great writers read great books, and they read a wide variety of books. Uh, I posted uh, in the announcement some links to lists of books that are recommended. Uh, you can obviously easily find them yourself by, by searching for them, but if you look at those lists that I've linked to, you'll see that there are novels, there are story collections, there are collections of poetry, there are essay collections, there are memoirs, there are screenplays, there are all kinds of things. And that's because to be an effective writer, no matter what kind of writing we're trying to do, we have to read widely and we have to think about what we're, what we're reading very carefully and so on. Now, again, we can get lists of uh, books a lot of different places. I want to briefly talk about this book, though, The William H. Gass Reader. What else would I be talking about, of course, other than The William Gass Reader? And this is a collection of his fiction and um, his um, essays and lectures and, and all translations, all kinds of things. Uh, but in particular, what I wanted to look at was an essay that he did called 50 Literary Pillars. And what Gass did was he, it was kind of towards the end of his life, and he just sort of looked back and kind of brainstormed on what were some of the books that he had read over the decades that he felt had a direct impact on his thinking and his writing. And he culled down this long list to 50. Actually, it's 51. He kind of snuck one in at the end, an additional one. But, but anyway, these are books, again, and authors that he read uh, from the time he was, you know, a teenager, basically, until, you know, a full-fledged full adult. And he thought that they were particularly um, useful to him in various kinds of ways. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire list, uh, but it, it's interesting because uh, basically what he does is he lists – the book and the author, and then he gives you know a little paragraph where he explains what it is that um, he took from them that he felt he kind of synthesized into his own reading aesthetic, his own writing aesthetic, and so on. And the thing that I think is really especially interesting is again the wide variety of things that Gas points to as having shaped him as a writer. There are, of course, works of fiction, which was his primary interest in terms of creative writing. He wrote stories and novellas and novels. Um, so, yes, there are definitely uh, works of, of fiction. He, he lists you know, various novels by people like uh, Gustave Flaubert and, and Henry James and, and uh, uh, James Joyce and, and so on. But beyond that, he also lists collections of poetry. He lists collections of essays, diaries, letters, sermons, uh, all kinds of different things that he read over the years that he felt had a direct bearing on his style, how he thought about writing, how he constructed his writing, how he chose, how he chose his words, you know, all those kinds of things. So again, I just wanted to point to this as evidence of the fact that in order to be a, a 
a, a fully sort of developed and, and, and well-versed uh, writer um, that you really need to write, read a wide variety of things and not just uh, limit yourself to a very narrow band in terms of the kind of writing that you are reading. Yes, take a look at you know successful examples of, of whatever you're trying to write and draw from them what you can, but read well beyond that. You know, fiction, nonfiction, poetry, again, letters, diaries, anything basically that that will, you know, kind of expand your horizons, expand your perspective, give you ideas of your own for things to write about and so on. All right, I don't want this video to be terribly long, so I'm going to stop there. But I definitely encourage you to read widely and to get a hold of the William H. Gass Reader because this is a great uh bunch of variety just in one book.